Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. Doing the work as Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has created us to do, so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations. That may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so called black, Hispanic, or Native American. One of the one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And this is going to be another exhortation video, man, because this is the spirit that brothers have been in, you see, as of late to exhort and, and to, to, to have just to push that spirit and vibration that, man, we are going to be delivered from our current situation. Yeah, it's going to get a, a little rough before it ends because we have to do we have to go through tribulation. We have we must go through it. You know, but at the end of the day, as it says right here in, in, in the title of Jeremiah 31, Israel's mourning turned to joy, and that's exactly what's coming. You see, because that's the expected end for the Most High's people. This is what the Most High's prophesied from the beginning. This is what it was always going to be when it's all said and done, man. You see? And, and our enemies, these heathen nations, namely the uh, mainly the Edomites, they're standing in the way of that, man. They want to they handle that. They want to stop it. They don't want us to come into what the Most High has promised. But at the end of the day, we, we, we know what? What do we know? That the Most High's will reigns over all, man. You see, so it doesn't matter how our enemies feel or what they want to happen. It's all about what our Father has spoken, man. And that's what it's going to be when it's all said and done. So let's get into it. And hopefully this is edifying to the elect because that's what we do it for, man, to to push this this, this comforter out to comfort your spirit, you see, to, to, to lift you up after you having a bad day. That's why we do these videos, man, to keep one another encouraged. Like it says, what? Uh, uh, exhort one another daily, man. So here I am through the Holy Spirit. Y'all about Shemir, I was shot to hopefully do that. So this is Jeremiah 31 and 1. Once again, the title was what? Israel's morning turned to joy. So, verse 1, it says what? At the same time, say, if Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, while I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Do you hear that? This is what it's going to be when it's all said and done. Every single Israelite is going to be returned back to the Most High eventually, but it begins with the remnant. And this is who you see standing up upon their feet in these last days. You see? The remnant of the nation of Israel. And I'm talking about the true believers because you have a lot of Israelites being raised up. As, as it tells you in uh, Ezekiel 37, there are different classes of Israelites that are being raised up right now. You have those who are being raised up just to know they're Israelites and nothing more. You're having those who are being raised up and having that breath of life breathed into them to come and serve Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah in all fullness, truth, and sincerity, man. You see, and that's who the Most High is talking about right now. That's who the Most High is dealing with right now. Those who have that breath of life in them, preaching the 100% doctrine as the Most High has commanded us to do. You see, and eventually, this is going to lead us coming back into the fullness of being the sons of the Most High. And he's going to be our God again, man. You see? And the fullness of it. Because we're going to be brought into that second covenant. Which, which, which entails what? Us being changed out of these bodies. Us being having the law, statutes, and commandments put into our inward part, man. It tells you that at the uh, in the second half of this chapter. That's what the Most High means, and it all goes back to what the Most High promised. You see, with an oath unto our forefather Abraham. Let's show you that real quick. Let's show you that this goes back to what the Most High promised unto our forefather Abraham, man. When you go to Genesis, uh, seventeen. And seven. Yup, there it is. Yup, this is Genesis seventeen and seven. This is our and this is the most I talking to our forefather Abraham. You see, right after his name was changed to what? From from Abram to Abraham, right? And the most I told him this in verse seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, because it's all about bloodline. That's what the Bible is dealing with, man. 
This book, this book is not universal. This book, when you follow it, follow it with the true understanding through the Holy Spirit, you see the most I reveals unto you that it's all about the bloodline, you see, of the sons of God. Which was which was reestablished in the earth through our forefather Abraham. You see? That's why the most I talks about talks like this, because it's about a seed line. Genesis 17 and 7, it says, well, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. Do you hear it? The everlasting covenant is the second covenant. The most I was talking about this all the way back in Genesis, man. It was always going to it was always going to come to this. And here we are. You see. At the latter end of the journey. Being prepared to come into this with the most high's promise. Genesis 17 and 7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. You see that? There it is, man. That's what that's the, the most I talking about the second covenant right here. And then he re reiterate this point through the through the mouth of Jeremiah. You see, matter of fact, let me about the Genesis. Maybe maybe some more on that, real quick. Genesis seventeen and seven. Oh yeah, yeah. let's get verse eight. It says, "What now? We give unto thee and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan." From the Nile to the Euphrates, that's our land, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. There it is. Now, back in Jeremiah 31, and one at the same time said, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? Because each tribe is a family, is a nation unto itself. You see? From Judah down to Issachar, each tribe, shit, you want to get even more technical, each man, once we're up under that second covenant, is going to be a nation unto himself. To fulfill the promise that the Most High made unto our forefather Abraham of what? His seed being as the stars of heaven for multitude. <laughs> you see, everything is, is, is coming, coming right on time, just like the Most High promised it would. It says what? And they shall be my people. Verse 2. Thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. And that happened here where? In Babylon the Great. You see? After we went through so much hell, man, uh, in, in his captivity, the Most High finally returned unto us. You see, by sending the elder Abba Bivens to, to, to preach unto us Yahweh Shah. You see, who was the doorway back unto the Almighty. Gave us the Holy Spirit, gave us the Comforter, and now we're at rest spiritually because we know the truth now, man. And it's going to culminate into what? Us entering into that rest physically once the Lord Yahweh Shai comes to save us from the lands of our captivities as prophesied all throughout these scriptures. You see? Verse 3 says what? Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with kindness have I drawn have I drawn thee. And the most I never professes any love toward any other nation besides the Israelites. You can't go you can't go into these scriptures to, to find what the most high professes love for Esau. Malachi tells you what? Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Says the same thing about you heathen nation, that you are nothing unto him. You're a drop of water that falls from a vessel. You are as spittle unto him. That's what the Most High thinks of you heathen nations. He only professed love for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do you see that? Matter of fact, let's go back to it. Let's get Deuteronomy 7. And we'll start at, uh, come on, man. Yep. This is Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And when you go to the first uh 
first chapter, first verse of this book, it tells you who this is addressed to. These are all the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Then it proceeds to, you see, be laid out. Then you get to the seventh chapter, it says what? Verse six, for thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy power. Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Most High has never done this before for any nation. The Most High has never said that any other nation has been special unto him. He's only stated this pertaining to the Israelites. That's it. No one else. We are above all nations. Now, we might be on the bottom right now, but it's because what? We're, we're serving out our punishment for our transgressions, which is coming to an end. And what lets you know that it's coming to an end? Because the Most High has given us of his Holy Spirit. We're slowly transitioning out of captivity to come back into the what? The fullness of being the sons of the Most High. Why? Because of the love that the Most High has for us. Going back to those promises that the Most High made. The Most High chose us as his people above everyone else. And that's just the truth of the matter. Feel how you want to feel about it. It's just how the Most High set it up to be. Verse 7 says what? Yahweh did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you are more in number than any people, for you are the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of the Pharaoh of e uh, out of the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And guess what? The same thing is happening now. For the love and kindness that the Most High has towards us and to our forefathers, he's about to deliver us out of the hand of the modern-day Pharaoh, you see, which is Esau, Edom, in this time, man, because of the love that he has for us. And he's going to do what? Put us back on high as his special people above all nations forevermore. This is what's happening. So you waking up to the understanding that you're an Israelite is not some small thing, man. The Most High, the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is fulfilling the promises that he made with our forefathers so long ago, man. Through our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? That's what's happening. You see? This is what this is what, what we're fighting. You see, this, this is what we're in right now. This is the journey that we're on, man. So, verse 4 says what? Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt be adorned with thy tabrets. And shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. We're going to come back into what? A state of rejoicing. Now we rejoice now, but it's, on, it's, it's, it's momentary here in this captivity because what? The shit we have to go through on the daily. Once once the Most High sends you, I wish I to, to deliver us from this. You see, we're going we're gonna to rejoice every day. You see? In the fullness of the Spirit, man. In the fullness of those immortal bodies. We're going we're gonna to rejoice. You see, the proper way when the Most High saves us uh, from this captivity, man. No more pain, no more suffering, no more death for our people. No more wickedness amongst our people. That's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is bringing us into, man. The fucking way of being a nigga is going to be completely wiped from our people, man. That's what we're looking forward to. And it's going to be beautiful. No more heathen nations ruling over us. We're going to be back in our country, the country that the Most High gave unto our forefathers and to us for a perpetual inheritance. Once again, that stretches from the Nile River to the Euphrates River. All that land between those waterways, that's our land. That's our country. And the Most High even tells you that he's going to, he's going to add more land to that land. And he's going to beautify but way beyond anything that he's ever done before. We're going to have a land to call our own. Not no fucking Africa, man. Which is a beautiful country, but that's not our homeland. Our land that the Most High gave us is the land of Canaan. Go and look. Go and look. Go and research it. Go look at the map. And see what we're about to be taken back into. We're about to be taken to the, back into the center, the heart of the earth. Paradise, the garden eastward in Eden, man. That's what we're being taken back to. 
to live as the Most High has set us up to live on the earth as gods, as his sons. You see? That's what we're coming to. That's what we're longing for. And that's what it's going to be when it's all said and done. Verse uh, 5 says what? Thou that uh, thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, the planter shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a for there shall be a day that the watchman upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up to Zion unto Yahweh our power. And you got Northern Kingdom brothers. You see, that's doing that. Brothers from the from the Latin tribes, they're doing it on the highways and byways, man. Prophesying because they're Israelites. For all you doubters out there. For you black only uh, Israelites. That's some bullshit, man. Them brothers out there standing bold, bold, boldly, ten toes down, proclaiming the same gospel that the southern kingdom is proclaiming, man. Because we are those two witnesses. You see? Standing arm in arm with our brothers in arm, man. Confessing and testifying of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, and what he's about to do for our people. They're doing that because they're Israelites. They couldn't do it if they weren't. A lot of you niggas don't get it, man. The northern kingdom is out there because they are Israelites. Out there breaking down every prophecy, you see, that's in these scriptures the right way. Because they are also the sons of the Most High, man. Verse 7 says what? For thus said Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yahweh, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. And that's exactly what the Most High is doing. You see? That's what the Most High is doing. That's why you see, once again, like I said, you see the remnant being raised up. Those who are preaching the 100% doctrine, we're not using any gimmicks. We're not remixing the doctrine. We're giving it to you. The proper way as the Most High has uh, uh, told us to do it. Because we know if we don't, that, that certain death, man. We're telling you what the, the, the truth of what the MOTB is. And these other camps are not doing that, man. It's because what? They're not a part of that remnant. Unless what? The Most High had to repent before it's all said and done. But the Most High is coming to save his remnant, man. That's what it's all about. This is who Yahweh Shah came for first and foremost. You see? Now listen to what the Most High says. Verse 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, which is where? Babylon the Great. America. From this land that we're in right now. The chief land of our captivity. Now we're being held captive all throughout the earth, but the chief captivity is here. where? Here in America, man. This is the north country that the Most High is going to save us from. He's coming to save us, man. To, to do what? To, to turn our mourning into joy. Jeremiah 31 and uh, 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them the blind and the, and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. And the Most High has prophesied this all throughout the scriptures. Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back to uh, Deuteronomy 30. He's even prophesied this through the mouth of Moses. Listen. Restoration promised. The restoration of what? The children of Israel. We're, we're being restored. You see? To that original state, man. Being the sons of the Most High. And this was prophesied from the beginning. This is what it was always going to be. You heathen really thought you were just going to keep us in captivity forever, but that was never the Most High's purpose, man. Because the Most High tells us of what? He has thoughts that he thinks towards of thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. Now I get that next. One of my favorites, man. This is Deuteronomy 30 and 1. It says what? And it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. Whether your how thy power have driven thee, meaning what? We're going to be brought back into remembrance to call it to mind. That's what we're doing now. Leaving off from the bullshit that our enemies gave us. Oh, you're black, you're Hispanic, you're Native American. No, we're none of that, man. 
We are the sons of the Most High. We are the Israelites. We are the Israelites, man. We are the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their blood runs through our veins. You see? As well as the blood of the Messiah, man. His blood runs through our veins because we are family. We are we are related. We are kin. We are family. Yahweh Shai is our family, man. He is our brother. You see? A descendant of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. You see that? And this is who he's coming to save, his people, as prophesied. So Jeremiah 30 and 1, it says, well, it shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee, the blessing and the curse. And we had the blessings upon the Solomon. Now we're under the curses here in our, in our captivity, which I have said before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations, whether how thy power have driven thee. And this is happening all throughout the earth. The remnant of the nation of Israel is being risen up in these last days all throughout this planet just as prophesied right on time just like the most i said what happened verse 2 says what and shall return unto yahweh thy power meaning what we're going to repent through faith in our lord yahweh shah because that's how we're saved and shall obey his voice according to all that i command thee this day thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul that then yahweh thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Yahweh thy power have scattered thee. And this is the narrative that is followed all throughout the scriptures, all the way to the book of Revelation, man. When you read about that, uh, the 144,000 and that great multitude being gathered, this is that prophecy being fulfilled right here. The Israelites, that that's you, you're reading about the remnant of Israel being gathered in Revelation 7. That's why it's the great multitude which no man can number. The Israelites being gathered from all throughout the world as the Most High promised. It was never pertaining to you heathen nation. You wanted to believe that, but that's not the truth of the matter. That doesn't add up because where, where in the Bible does the Most High promise salvation to you heathen nations? No, the Most High promised salvation to those Israelites who are in the Gentile state of mind among you. But in the last days, they were going to be what? Brought back into remembrance of who they truly are. And they were going to return to the Most High through faith in Yahweh Shai. And if they continue in faith until the end, they shall be saved as the Mo as Yahweh Shai has spoken. That's what it's talking about, man. It goes on to say, verse what? Verse 4. Uh, if any of thine be driven unto the... If any of thine be out... Slot, if any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven... From thence will Yahweh thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. You see that? Wherever the remnant is in the earth, Yahweh Shai is coming to gather them according to the Most High's will, as the Most High's promise right here. Verse 5 says what? And Yahweh thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And, thou, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. You hear that? We're going to be gathered from the land of our captivities and taken back into the land, into our homeland, the land that the Most High gave for, to our forefather as an inheritance. You see? This is prophesied all throughout this book, man. The narrative of the Bible never changes. From the beginning to the end, it stays the same. Verse 6 says what? And Yahweh thy power will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy power with all thine heart, and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And that goes into what? Us being brought into the second covenant. To be made perfect. So we will never sin, we will never transgress, we will never go off ever again. We're going to be completely righteous, man. And that's something that hasn't happened for our people right now, so that lets us know what? We're not under the second covenant because if we were, according to the second covenant, I wouldn't have to be teaching these lessons, man. I wouldn't have to do any videos up under the second covenant because all of our people would know it. And that's something that's not happening right now. So that lets us know that we're not under the second covenant for you bug outs out there, man. Let's get another one to show that our people are going to be gathered. Let's get Jeremiah 23 and 5. It says what? Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh. That I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, 
and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. This king is talking about our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. He's coming back to the earth to, to reign in righteousness. He's coming back to do with, do away with all the wickedness that we see going on around us here upon the Esau, man. Yahweh Shah is about to completely dismantle and destroy this current setup that Esau has going on. So, so we can establish what? A kingdom will endure the righteousness. And we're going to enforce these laws, statutes, and commandments as the law of the universe. And you heathen nations will follow them, man. You see, and that's when true justice is going to be uh, dished out. Tr uh, true judgment is going to be dished out. All this madness that we see going on around us, this won't be a thing in the kingdom of heaven, man. Up under our Lord, Yahweh Shah. This shit is going, to be, this is going to be destroyed right along with Esau, man. Verse 6 says what? In his days, Judah shall be saved, southern kingdom, and Israel shall dwell safely. That's the northern kingdom, so-called Hispanics and Native Americans. You see? And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth, which brought up and which led the seed, the seed, the physical descendants. You see? Of who? The house of Israel, which is Jacob. Out of the north country, which is what? Babylon and great America. And from all countries, whether I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Further backing up the point that was made in Deuteronomy 30, also in Jeremiah 31. You can read it in Revelation 5. You can read it in Revelation 7. You can read it in Ezekiel 36. You see, you can read it all throughout this book, man. How the Most High is coming to gather his remnant from all the lands that he scattered us to. This is the true narrative of the scriptures, and, th and this is going to cause what? Our mourning to be turned into joy. To finally be saved from the hands of our enemy, to finally be saved from this bondage of corruption, which is this flesh, to be brought into an everlasting state of righteousness, peace, joy, and happiness forevermore, man. This is what it is. This is what's playing out right before your eyes. Man. So let's get uh real quick and we'll wrap it up in a minute. Jeremiah 36 or 31 and uh where were we at? Yup. Verse 9 says what? They shall come with weeping and with supplication will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way, which is this truth, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. You hear that? He only says he's a father to uh, to Israel, man. He's not a father to all nations. He's a father to the Israelites. And Ephraim, you see, we represents the what? The head of the northern kingdom. They're a part of that as well. So-called Hispanics, Mexicans, you see, Brazilians, Argentinians, you see, Chileans, El Salvadorians, so-called Dominicans. So-called Native Americans, so-called uh, Seminole Indians, they're all a part of this, man. And just look at them, all the flavor that the Northern Kingdom got. I've been living amongst the Northern Kingdom for, for a few years now, and, and bro, they, they are us. <laughs> we are them. Shit. We are the same people, man. Point blank, period. Those are our brothers and sisters, man. They got too much flavor not to be. Who else would they be? They're Israelites, man. Come up off that bullshit. So it goes on to say, verse 10, Hear the word of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. And that's exactly what's happening. And this is why the Lord Yahweh Shah said, What? He's only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why were they lost? Because we were scattered. And as, we, and as we've been scattered for all these generations, we fell away from the understanding of who we were. We adopted the cousins of the heathen, thinking that that's what we were supposed to be doing. No. And this is why the Most High said of the prophets, in every land all throughout the world, to preach this gospel so the remnant can be can hear it and be brought back into remembrance, to return back to the Most High through faith in Yahweh Shai. Now they're walking in the Spirit, of you see, in the Holy Spirit, having faith in the Lord, Waiting to be saved when he returns. 
to be gathered as a flock. I mean, as a ship, as a sheep of the Most High's flock. You see, it says what, man? Come on, man. <laughs> Verse eleven says what? For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah have redeemed Jacob. And ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. And that's what's happening now, man. We're being ransomed from the hand of our chief enemy, Esau Edom. The Most High, he, he's saving us from this man. It's a, it's a process that we're going through. But it's all going to accumulate into what? Us being saved from the hand of our enemy. Who was stronger than us, man. This is why we lean solely upon Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. You see, to deliver us. You see? And that's going to be what? The end of our morning, man. Being saved from the hands of our enemies. Oh, man. That's Luke. Let's show you. Luke 1, 68, it says what? And this shows you that this, this is all congruent, the old and the new, because it goes on to say in Luke 1 and 68, basically to say the same thing. That's being said in Jeremiah 31, Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of who? The Lord God of Israel. If the New Testament is for all nations, why is it talking about the Lord God of Israel right here? Because it's still the same thing that's written in the New. I mean, the Old. Once again, it all goes hand in hand. Nothing has changed. It's just these pagan Christians have tried to come and insert their dogma, you see, into these scriptures to make it you see, to try to, to try to make it fit their narrative, and it doesn't fit. The Most High is the Lord God of Israel in the Old Testament. He's a, he's the he's the the uh, Lord God of Israel in the New Testament, man. Point, and that's what it's all about. The Old and the New is talking about the same thing. The Most High's people, the the, the 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 Israelites, beginning with the remnant, being saved by His Son Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who came to die for the sins of Israel, according to Acts five twenty nine and thirty. Luke 1 and 68 says what? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited his people. It's like he had visited and redeemed his people and have raised up and horn of salvation for us in the house of our, our servant, of his servant David, which was our Lord Yahweh Shah, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which can be found where? In the Old Testament, which have been since the world began. And that's what the prophets was talking about. How the Most High is going to save us through his son Yahweh Shah. That was prophesied. And the first portion of that was fulfilled in the New Testament when Yahweh Shai came to get up on that cross to shed his blood for who? The Israelites, beginning with the remnant. That what? Verse 7. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Beginning with who? Esau, Eden, the so-called white race. The same people that was ruling over us during the time of the New Testament. The Roman Empire. The Caucasians, you see, which are still in power to, to this day, still ruling over us to this day. So I say is what? The Most High is going to redeem us and save us from the hand of him that was stronger than us. And why is he going to do that? Verse 72 tells you why. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. And this is going to be this is going to be done where? This is going to be done in the kingdom of heaven. You see? Fully in the kingdom of heaven. It's happening now, but it's going to be in the, in the fullness in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 76. And thou, child, shalt be called a prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. And it's talking about John the Baptist preparing the way for the Lord Yahweh Shah. And we're coming in that same state as well. We, we've come before the Lord to prepare his way. You see, to, 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 to be his heralds, man, to let the world know what's about to happen. You see? Verse 77 says what? To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of sins. Telling our people to repent. Turn back from your ways. Have faith upon the Lord, Yahweh Shai, as it is written. You see that? 
Verse 78. Through the tender mercy of our power, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death <laughs> to guide our feet into the way of peace. And that's happening here in Babylon the Great, man. And we are being guided into the way of peace. You see that? Then he goes on to say, verse 80, And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts to the day of his showing unto Israel. And that's talking about who? John the Baptist. But it's all it all goes hand in hand, man. You see? So Jeremiah 13 and uh, 12, and I'll wrap it up at 14. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of Yahweh, for wheat and for wine and for oil, for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all, because we're going to be taken from this cursed state that we're in now to be brought into those blessings. That's the byproduct of being brought into the second covenant. You see, being made completely righteous allows us to enter into all those blessings that we read about in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. You see? Verse 13 says what? Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and shall make them rejoice from their sorrow. And that's beginning now, but it's going to be in the fullness in the kingdom of heaven. You see, we're rejoicing now. That's why we go into these scriptures to be comforted. We're always talking about the kingdom, always talking about being changed, always talking about being saved when we sound like a broken record because it's repetitive, man. It's repetitive because it still has to happen. And we're holding the most high to his word that he that he promised, you see, until he fulfills it. And it will be done, man. It will be done. Our morning is going to be turned into joy. Very, very soon, man. A sooner than when we believed. You see? Verse 14 says what? And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, said Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And this is what I and this is and that's gonna be the end result of our journey, man. You see? Satisfied with the goodness of the most high. You see, when we're finally saved from the hands of our enemies. As prophesied, man, thus save the Bible, thus save Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So our morning will be turned into joy very soon, as the most high has promised. It must be done. So with that, I'm going to end up by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. A double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful little Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Baba.